Hello, my name is Christine Tavares. I'm with the St. Charles City County Library District, and welcome to Let's Explore. For today's Let's Explore, I thought it would be fun to explore a Zentangle drawing. So what is a Zentangle? A Zentangle is kind of like a doodle, but it is more intentional than a doodle. It is full of line patterns, it is mindful, it is really awesome, and in just a second I'll tell you what we need to get started with our Zentangle. All right, friends, so what we need for today's drawing is a piece of drawing paper. Um, I would suggest white paper. You probably can use a different color paper, but white is gonna be best for everything to show up. Um, you're also gonna need a Sharpie or two um, or some kind of waterproof pen. If you want to start in pencil first, you can do that, that's fine. And then we're also gonna need some watercolor paints, um, water and brushes. So we're gonna get started with our Zentangle. Like I said before, a Zentangle is more than just a doodle. Um, it is an intentional drawing that has lots of different line patterns in it. And I call today's Zentangle Little Red Boat, the Little Red Boat. So um, we're gonna draw kind of like this abstract ocean scene. So what we're gonna start with is just five very simple wavy lines. Um, and I'm gonna start about maybe a quarter of the way down my paper. This is gonna be the top of the water. And I'm just gonna start by making a very simple wave line, like it's the ocean. I'm gonna just scooch down a little bit and maybe do a little more of a gentle wave line. I'm gonna change it up a little bit with the third one and go up and down. Maybe I'll go back to kind of a traditional ocean water line. And then my last one is just gonna be kind of really lazy. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five lines. And then I said this is called the little red boat. So at the very top, we're gonna to draw our little boat. Um, and really, you're just gonna draw a half circle kind of sitting on the top of the water. And I'm gonna stop when I get to this wave because I wanna pretend like the boat is behind the wave a little bit. So that's the body of my boat. I'm gonna draw the mast, which is just really two straight lines down. And I'm gonna draw the sail, which is just triangle. And we'll just connect it with two little lines like that. All right, so now for the Zentangle part. Each of these lines created sections. So you created one, two, three, four, five sections you have five lines and we're going to fill each one of these with a line pattern the first line pattern that i'm going to show you guys is um it's a little bit complicated it's going to take a while so i'm going to start it and then pause my video and let you guys catch up and then i'll show you the finished product um, you can do any kind of line pattern you want for this project but the, for the first one i thought it'd be really awesome to do kind of these spirals filling this space and i'm starting out pretty large just in random places. And then I'm gonna fill the rest of the space with different size spirals because I think that's what's gonna make our drawing super cool, super interesting. I'm also changing, do you see how I'm changing the direction of the spirals? It's just gonna make it a little more interesting. All right, so I've got my larger spirals going. And I'm gonna start over here and just kind of start filling the space with spirals. Some of them will be smaller, some will be bigger. And you guys could probably just sit and watch me draw spirals for 20 minutes and be mesmerized, but I'm not gonna take up all of your video time by doing that. So I am gonna pause it and I'll get back to you when I have filled the space with my spirals. All right, friends, so I've Fill this space with spirals, um, all kinds of different shapes and um, lengths. And this, I would say, is very busy for our eye to look at. So my next pattern is going to be very simple um, so that our eye has a break. So we're going to go down to this next section. And really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this space with kind of lazy, wavy lines that just follow that top line and just go across the paper. Now I'm gonna run into some other waves here, so I'm gonna stop and then continue. We're gonna pretend that this pattern is behind this pattern. 
This one, I'll let you watch me. This won't take too long. <laughs> I'm gonna fill this space, fill this space. And while I do think that our eye needs a place to rest, and this is very easy for our eye to look at, I think I wanna make it a little more interesting. So I'm gonna come back with my thicker Sharpie and I'm just gonna put some dots in every other space here. I'm sorry, I meant every other little section that I made. And you know what? I am gonna pause this because I think I'm gonna add a surprise. So you'll see what that is when we come back. Okay, can you tell me what my surprise is? I thought the dots were cool, um, but then it left these empty spaces. So I decided to go ahead and fill them with vertical lines. And I thought that made it a little more interesting and still easier for our eye to look at than that. Okay, our next section, we're gonna come down here and we are gonna do a zigzag pattern. So let's see, first, I'm gonna start with my thicker Sharpie because I think I need some bold lines in this section. We're gonna do just some big, loose zigzags. They don't have to be perfect. They won't be perfect because I'm not a machine. If you don't have a thicker Sharpie or a thicker marker, it's okay. It will look just as awesome with a marker that's all the same throughout the whole drawing. All right, so I like that. I think we need a little something more. So I'll surprise you when I come back. So my surprise was that I added vertical and horizontal lines in between the zigzags. And I think now that we've got two sections that are a little bit similar, I'm gonna go ahead and outline with my thicker Sharpie this section, I've gotta find my line, just to make sure that it stands out. Actually, let's go ahead and outline all the sections. Yes, I really like where this is going. That's a great thing about a Zentangle. If you're not satisfied with something, just add to it. All right, awesome. All right, I'm gonna come down here and I feel like we need some more circles because we got circles, circles, no circles. Um, so for this section, I am gonna go ahead and do something similar to the spirals. But this time, it's just going to be circles. I'm starting out with bigger circles, just kind of randomly placed. And then I'm going to fill in the other spaces with smaller circles, so it makes it more interesting. And I will tell you, I'm going to go ahead and add a dot into my bigger circles first, just to kind of see what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna fill the space with smaller circles and I'll pause it and you can see me when I'm all done. Whew, that's a lot of circles. Um, so I went ahead and found some of the bigger circles and I'm just putting dots in them. And you can see that there are some big circles, some medium circles, some teeny tiny circles. If you do this pattern, it's gonna take a little bit, but it can be relaxing if you let it. And that's my goal with this project is to have fun and be relaxing at the same time. All right, my last pattern, uh, we're going to do a basket weave pattern. So that's fairly simple, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how I do that just so you can get it. So I'm starting by sectioning off this last wave section and just loose vertical lines, a little bit wavy. And the basket weave pattern is an alternating pattern and it's just using straight lines. So I'm gonna start here and go one, two, three, horizontal lines, one, two, three, four, vertical lines, switch back to horizontal lines. And you alternate every section. So you might have more than three lines um, in each section, more than three types of lines, but um, we're just gonna make sure we're alternating. So this section over here, I'm gonna go vertical, just fill the space horizontal, and then vertical. Do you guys see how those alternate? It's kind of like a checkerboard. But I'm looking at my screen and it's not super, it's not super dark. So I hope you guys can see it at home. 
But I found that when I was recording this, because my paper is white, the lights were really washing out my drawing. So I decided to go this route. So I'm really hoping that you can see it. This is kind of fun. And again, it's not perfect. I'm not using a ruler. It's not supposed to look like uh, blueprints or some kind of architectural drawing. It's just supposed to be loose and fun. And it can be very interesting. And patterns are getting bigger and bigger. Whoa. That's okay. Almost done. So this way we call it a, a, a woven pattern or a basket pattern as it, it kind of looks like, if you look at a piece of fabric up close, it kind of looks like the threads. Or if you've ever looked at a basket up close, it kind of looks like that. Okay, so we're done with the line patterns, but I did notice that I probably, because I have these thick lines here, I think I need a thick line at the top. I'm just going to carefully outline this. We're going to make sure we don't hit the boat too much. All right, that looks great. All right, now the fun part, painting. So we have one, two, three, four, five sections to paint. And we have the little boat. So I called this project the Little Red Boat Zentangle. So I'm going to make my boat red. You can make your boat whatever color you like. That red is kind of thin, but we're going to go for mine. My little boat's going to be red. Just the boat part, not the sail. All right, and then my ocean water, I'm going to use different shades of blue. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, if you think about the ocean, the water is pretty light at the top. So I am going to start with this lighter blue and just see if we like that. I think I like that. You might want to add a little green to it though. The cool thing about watercolor is that you can mix. You have a little bit of time to mix. Let's see what this green does. Not a whole lot. Come on, green. I changed it a little bit. We'll go with that. So I'm going to go with this lighter blue. And then I'm going to get darker as I go down, 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 down to the ocean floor to where I'll be mixing a little bit of blue and black together. But you guys can paint your ocean however you want. Maybe some of you guys want to do a rainbow ocean or uh, maybe an ocean at sunset would have, um, the water would be kind of oranges and reds and purples. That might be interesting too. And my paper is not really accepting this watercolor. Um, it's not watercolor paper. That's probably why. It is a nice drawing paper. So it's gonna take a little bit for it to dry. That's why you see me moving it around. If you're using copy paper or watercolor paper, it's gonna soak it up really fast and you're not gonna have the chance to move it. Did you also notice how my lines are not bleeding? They're not going anywhere because I made sure to use Sharpie or something waterproof. If you didn't use a Sharpie or something waterproof, you might see that your black lines are starting to bleed, which can be kind of cool. Um, there is a book called The Rainbow Fish, and the art in that book is watercolor, and the artist um, went ahead and used a pen that was not exactly waterproof, and so you'll see that the lines are kind of blurred a little bit, the black lines, and that's actually kind of cool. So that could be a cool effect. I went ahead and moved to a different blue for this layer, for this layer of the ocean. Um, it's not super dark, so I'm okay with that. I'm just trying to get it to soak in. Come on, paint. It's all right. It'll be different for you guys. You won't have this paper. All right, we're going to go a little darker with the next layer. So I'm going to use this blue, which seems to be just regular plain old blue. Yes. And it's thick enough to where I can spread it around quite a bit. But I am adding more water. I don't want it to be so thick that it covers up my cool lines. Oh, I see that I forgot a line here. Too late. Can you guys see it? Do you see where I forgot to outline something? I could try to do it now, but the Sharpie probably wouldn't work on the wet paper, so I'll have to do that later. So if you finish your drawing slash painting and you want to come in and show me, 
I will show you that I will have corrected this little tiny spot that I forgot to outline. So I hope you do come in to show me because I would love to see what you guys create. All right, now for a darker blue. So I'm gonna start with that blue that I just finished up using. So really it's okay if I get it on that section above. But I'm gonna add some purple to make kind of like a violet blue to make it even a little bit darker. So let's grab some of this purple and start mixing. Do you guys see how that sort of looks like the violet blue crayon or violet purple, I guess it's called? Blue violet, violet purple. They're almost the same, but not quite. Anyway, we made a darker blue by adding some purple. You can um, make a darker blue by adding um, red too, that will just make a purplish blue, but it will make it darker. All right, I like that. It looks like we're getting deeper into the ocean. Okay, my last section, I told you I was gonna mix a little black. So I'm gonna go back to this darker blue that I have. Um, I probably am gonna go ahead and add some, bring some of that purple back in, just so we're staying consistent. Oh, I forgot to rinse. Shame, shame, Mrs. Tavares. Or Miss Christine, I should say. My old students used to call me Mrs. Tavares. That's a hard habit to break. You can call me that if you want. <laughs> All right, so we're adding just a tiny bit of black. See how dark that black is? I don't want it to, to totally take over my section here, but it did make it a darker purplish blue. And I do like that. I like how it did that. And this is gonna take a bit to dry. But like I said, if you guys come in and see me, I'll show you my finished product and I think, I think you will like it. All right, so that is how to make a very interesting Zentangle with our little red boat. So like I said, come in, see me, show you what you made, and we'll see you next time on Let's Explore.